This one on here is the cost of inflation. I think we're up to video eight now or whatever. Cost of inflation, right. Number one, there is going to be, and there is a fall in real incomes because if we've got an inflation rate of 10% and wages are only going up by 4%, then there's going to be a fall in AD because there's going to be a fall in real wages of 6%. Savers will lose and borrowers will gain. What is the point of saving when you're going to lose 10% of your money every single year? This creates macro instability. If there's macro instability, uh, the analysis is going to be less investment. The mass product accelerator works in reverse. So this is really why Rishi Sunak's main government objective right now is to bring down inflation. So you can go to the election and say, well, I brought down inflation, I'm the responsible one, and then everything else will be okay. Okay, so little one here. Obviously, you've got to change your menus more if the prices keep on changing. Okay, we all get that. If inflation goes up, that means we'll have higher interest rates. Higher interest rates. So in January 2023, they were 3.5%. Remember, they were 0.5% for years and years and years. And in February, they got up to 4%. OK, the higher interest rates will therefore make it more expensive to borrow money. And in the UK, there is a lot of personal debt, 400% of GDP. The national debt is 100% of GDP. So all those people who have personal debt will then be playing more in their debt, which will then, which, which will then mean that they will decrease demand. And that could have, once again, a reverse multiple accelerator effect. So a lot of people are very, very concerned about this within the UK. That could create a lot of personal bank. Uh, bankruptcies, that's obviously pretty scary because then you get all the consequences of unemployment and all the stress levels. And finally, we will lose international competitiveness against everybody else. OK, so the UK has got an inflation of 10%. Germany's got an inflation rate of 0%. And therefore, we will sell fewer goods because they will be more expensive. Just a quick bit on here. OK, we have demand for inflation. Demand for inflation, we, we, we increase interest rates. Right now, we've an output gap of zero, so we've probably got a little bit of demand for inflation there. Tell the examiner that, and therefore we use increased interest rates to bring down demand pull. Right, cost push, though, is far, far harder to deal with. How do you, how do you solve the problem of oil and gas prices? OK, you have a green revolution, but that's too obvious. But also from there, we now, we, we now may get what the government is really scared of, is that we will get wage push inflation. So this, in a way, is why they're quite... OK, with the idea of unemployment, go, of unemployment going up, because then people will not ask for such large wage increases. The government is worried about this. That will then lead to an increase in unemployment. OK, so the uh, free market, then we have all the free market ideas of how you reduce the natural rate of unemployment, etc. OK, but the, but the problem is higher interest rates are a very blunt tool. They're pretty good at demand pull. They're not so good at cost push. There is a slight effect, because if we increase interest rates then hopefully the exchange rate will go up because hot money will come into the UK and therefore that will reduce the, the cost of goods coming into the UK, which will reduce cost of inflation. However, even with that, we still have a really low exchange rate overall. So that hasn't really worked so far. OK, or we could, you could use free market economics, of course, or we could have a green revolution. Sorry about that again. Our energy bills would then be 1,000 quid and we would have lower cost push inflation. And that is the end of that bit. Okay.